using pop-up events featuring kickball, dodgeball, art, music, free food, and other unstructured play activities for people of all ages. Last summer alone, Recess Cleveland hosted over 50 events that attracted more than 5,000 people, and in the process, they fed over 1,000 people. We will talk a little bit about this in, in a second. Alex is a serial entrepreneur who started a web design business at the age of 12. So that's you know, a six or seven period. This year, in addition to Recess Cleveland, Alex hopes to help a thousand young entrepreneurs launch their businesses with his Minor Tasks program. Minor Tasks is an app that connects renters, <coughs> homeowners, and business owners with youth in their neighborhoods that can help out around their homes and their businesses. Mr. Robertson grew up in, Glen, in the Glenville neighborhood of Cleveland, and although his grandfather was illiterate, which means he couldn't read, a village of people who understood the value of education and supported Alex's ambitions helped him graduate from the university school in 2002 and earned a degree from the computer engineering program at Columbia University School of Engineering and Applied Sciences in New York City. Alex is also an avid volunteer who frequently speaks to youth about entrepreneurship and education during his spare time. Let's give Mr. Robertson a nice few of these Thank you. I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to you today. Uh, I know it's almost your break time, but we're going to start off this speech with a pop quiz. All right. How many of you can identify the people in this photo? And feel free to shout out answers if you like. Or, or how much money your family makes, 
It's about what change you make in the world and what you can do. And I thank you, that's a fact. I thank my mom for that. That was a lifelong lesson. Uh, several years later, I became the first uh, male in my entire family to attend college, and one of the first, if not the first, U.S. students to get into Columbia University School of Engineering and Applied Science, where I graduated with a degree in computer engineering. I earned almost six figures at my first job while uh, invest at an investment bank firm in New York City. And at that time in my life, I thought everything was good. I was uh, officially balling. I had an awesome apartment. I got to bring my, or I got to uh, invite my mom to come out to the city and, and celebrate with me. I paid for it. I traveled five times a year. I mean, life was just grand. I was totally, totally living the dream, or so I thought. At work, I felt empty. I felt um, I was great at my job, but I felt like uh, life had a different calling for me. So after three years of finance, I started my inner entrepreneur and uh, started my own digital marketing company. I was living the dream again, or so I thought, until the unthinkable happened. While visiting family, I tore my Achilles at Euclid Beach Park. Oh, at the time, I didn't want to go back to New York City and experience New York on crutches. I thought that would be a terrible experience. So I was uh, laying up on my mom's couch when someone from the local community development corporation knocked on my door and said, we're starting a new plantation program and want you to be a part of it. I looked at him and I'm like, don't you to this booth? I can't walk. Let alone put some on more. And he was like, we'll pay you 12 bucks an hour to do the job. I was like, okay, I'll rock a buck. Uh, so a year later, I took over the program and became PD Plantation. Uh, in 2016, Cleveland Youth Landscaping received an award from the Cleveland Cavalier in front of uh, two or 20,000 fans uh, during the Eastern Conference Finals. If you're a Cavs fan, you'll remember 2016 was an amazing year for us. It was a year where Ron uttered those famous words, Cleveland, this is for you, and changed what it meant to be uh, a Clevelander for about a week. <laughs> Do you remember what it felt like walking through the streets of Cleveland that year, smiling and high-fiving everybody just because you were from Cleveland, just because you were Cavs fans? Did you notice that we ignored our differences in age, class, sex, gender, identity, political beliefs, employment, physical appearance, etc.? And more importantly, do you remember how it felt? How good it felt when we did those things? <coughs> I do. And it felt like a dream. To me, it felt like I, I experienced a piece of Martin Luther King for me. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Dr. King and why you have Monday off, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. became the predominant leader of the civil rights movement in the 1950s and 1960s. Dr. King was a leading spokesperson for nonviolent non methods of achieving social change. Dr. King was a loyal family man and found his wife Coretta while studying in Boston. They married in 1953 and had four children. If you visit the NLK Center uh, in Atlanta, you'll see this photo of Coretta pictured in the rear of the choir that she directed. Now, the young lady in the front right or the front left, uh, not only is that Coretta's cousin, it's my grandma. Back in the day when I used to tell my classmates that MLK was like my cousin, they never believed me, but here's the proof. <laughs> Without the use of Eventbrite or Facebook events, my cousin inspired 250,000 people to take two hour long, four hour long, in some cases, 16 hour long bus rides to Lincoln Memorial. The historical I Have a Dream speech given on August 28, 1963, rallied enough support to help pass key legislation that made it illegal to discriminate in public establishments, prohibits the denial of the right to vote, and requires that employers pay all employees for equal work regardless of their, or, or regardless of whether the employees are male or female. Civil rights that we all enjoy today, right? Not exactly. And that's, how, that's why I remember that feeling I had during that parade so vividly. Again, this was a, a glimpse of how Dr. Green, or a glimpse of Dr. King's dream and how beautiful the work would be when that dream is actually realized. Now, 
Imagine how you would feel if that championship experience was taken away from you. Imagine if you saw a TV commercial about a new amusement park, but you weren't able to go. Not because your family lacked the necessary resources, but because there wasn't a safe route for you to get there and back without incident. Imagine a friend uh, who told you how good the food was at their favorite restaurant, but you weren't able to attend, not because they're at capacity, but because of the person you choose to love. How would you feel if you were treated differently and had to act differently by those sworn to protect us because of the color of your skin? 56 years after Dr. Dreams, I have a dream speech, or Dr. King's I have a dream speech and the passing of legislation that makes it illegal to discriminate, there are populations still fighting for equality. So Alex, how do we fix this? Truth is, if I knew, I would have fixed it already, but baby steps. Three years ago, I wanted to play some dodgeball. I was really good at dodgeball on Founders Day. Matter of fact, in one particular Founders Day, I got 15 people out by myself, and I counted them out one by one after I had them. While working for our PD landscaping, I asked five of my employees to play some dodgeball with me, and four of them had never played. This is an injustice, I thought. And yes, their inexperience and my passion for dodgeball triggered my inner MLK, and at and Recess Cleveland was born. At our first event, we had 100 people show up, and of course, we played 30 on 30 dodgeball. My favorite moment, though, was our intergenerational kickball game we called Table Food versus Similac, or 21 and Younger versus 22 and Older. <laughs> At this particular game, there was a 65 year old grandma pitching the five year old kids in the neighborhood. I stopped and I was like, hey, somebody grab my camera. This like never happens. And that's the picture they took. <laughs> Funny part is, uh, we had some outfielders that were from Glenville High School and Get Academy in the outfield. And when grandma was up to kick, they all take, took 10 steps in, right? Granny kicked it over her head. <laughs> and one of the kids would run after the ball and said, hey, Granny got laid. She was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The first year was so special, in years two and three, we decided to spread it out to uh, other neighborhoods in Cleveland. Uh, we were recently entered into a contest that went $5,000, and we created this video to highlight some of our favorite future producers. Kids nowadays spend more time gaming, watching screens, and on their cell phone than sleeping. Recess Cleveland helps families become more active by throwing pop-up recess events featuring cake ball, bubbles, bubble soccer, dodgeball, giant bounce houses, dodgeball in giant bounce houses, giant soccer, mayors playing tetherball, door making downtown Cleveland, art, music, food, dancing, grandma and grandpa jousting, girls and boys in tug of war, again, hamster racing, the Browns losing, again, $5,000 and we need your vote to win. If we win, we'll let you decide where the next recess pop-up will be. Please take two seconds and go to recesscleveland.com slash vote and vote for us. After you vote, share this video so your friends can vote too. And let's have some fun with Recess Cleveland. Awesome job at creating environments my cousin would be proud of. 
All are welcome. Everybody's having fun. My hope is that exposure to law school recess events may cause a change of heart when it comes to discrimination and inspire others to become agents of change as well. <laughs> Last summer, Law Recess Cleveland hosted 55 event events, attracted over 5,000 people, and fed over 1,000 of them. I believe if we throw enough recess events while maintaining our environment based heavily on inclusion, equality, creativity, and most importantly, fun, we will help reduce crime by helping neighbors build positive relationships over games like kickball, dodgeball, etc. We will help youth connect with the elders in their neighborhood. We will bridge communities by highlighting our commonalities while accepting our differences. We will build better relationships between police and citizens. And we will make strides towards hoping MLK's dream become more permanent reality. Now, real quick. Now, real quick, shout out to you guys for the inspiration for Recess. Recess Cleveland would not exist if it wasn't for university school. Not only did the IAP itself come from Bowman Day, but alums and current students are the backbone of our volunteer base. Definitely reach out if you're interested in helping with Recess too. Uh, we're currently raising funds and seeking volunteers to help provide after-school recess activities to at-risk youth in Cleveland schools. Don't wait until, until our next research today to do good things. The time is always right to do what is right. Many of you are going to be up, are going to grow up to become doctors, lawyers, and engineers. Some of you, you are already Bitcoin miners, social media influence, influencers, and voters. I challenge you all to also become agents of change. Unlike, no, unlike most jobs, there's no interview, there's no experience necessary, there are no age requirements, and the world is always hiring more change agents. If you don't remember anything about this speech, try to remember these three things. Here are quick notes. Number one, Irvin Cash and Browns to give Recess Cleveland an award. Last time we won one, we won the championship. <laughs> Number two, never ask anyone for permission to do good. Go do good things and, you, and let your instincts guide you, guide you through the way uh, while you're doing good things. Number three, find your inspiration. Wrap it up in your beliefs, market it with your passion, and you will build a family of followers who will help you create the action it takes to make a difference. And one day, if you're lucky, uh, you'll receive an honorary jersey that they reassign to you. Have an awesome weekend in conversation.